So we've spoken about the growth target for the year, but what does implication hold? What implications rather does it hold for us here in Africa? Some hours ago, I spoke to Hannah Ryder. She's the chief executive at Development Remanaged. I started our conversation by asking her for the view on the argument that China's GDP growth target for this year of around five percent might be a little ambitious. Well, let's give it some context here. Um, last year, the government had a very similar target around 5% and according to the reports um, grew by 5.2. The year before it was also around 5%. At the same time the economy shrunk and that was because it was COVID-19. China had some very very difficult lockdown measures. But I think the results last year give you a clue. Even though people might feel and think, international analysts in particular, think that this might be ambitious, the Chinese government typically do not make uh, growth predictions that they don't think that they can deliver. So there is a plan behind it. And so my expectation is that even if it's ambitious, there's ambitious action that's expected to be able to uh, achieve that growth goal. It will likely achieve it. When presenting the work report on Tuesday as well, the Premier um, pointed out there's still overcapacity, right, in some industries and some parts um, of the Chinese economy, but also a bit of insufficient demand, particularly in the consumer side. But looking at it from the perspective of where we are, right, with, with African economies sending a lot of uh, commodities over into China, what's the implication of that, particularly with respect to growing demand for exports from Africa going into the Chinese market? Yes. Well, again, we have to take a bit of more of a historical point of view here because the overcapacity issue has been the case for a very long time and China has been trying to slowly shift that uh, in terms of pushing towards manufacturing of, of high value goods and so on and outsourcing a lot of its production. Uh, similarly, on the demand side, uh, the government has seen that there is there are significant issues with demand there's a very high savings rate not just in china but also a lot of asian economies in general so this is always something that, that the government has been trying to deal with what does that mean for africa well it is an opportunity in some ways if china's the overcapacity means that the chinese government and the chinese economy is likely to be still pushing towards this uh, outsourcing of production and it's for us um, as African uh, countries to really try to seize that moment and try to increase the value of our products that are going to be sold into the Chinese market and if we can you know kind of really promote more African products value-added African products then I think we do have some significant opportunities going forwards. Um, how how should countries best be thinking about you know capitalizing on that offshoring opportunity? Because um, what I have in mind is a country like Ethiopia, for example, that has built these massive industrial parks, and the entire pitch was, look, we've got the labor, we're a country of 100 million plus people, we've got cheap electricity, there's a massive investment program going on with hydroelectric dams. How do we make this tie together and essentially say, look, if you're essentially trying to essentially get rid of that excess capacity in China, bring it over into Africa. I mean, that's, that's the basic way of framing the, the, the argument, but it, it's, it's a lot harder to actually pull it off in practice, isn't it? Well, yes, and the pitch as a continent is even stronger. And also with the kind of Agenda 2063 plan, you know, we think of the African continent as being the next world's manufacturing hub. And of course, we have the population, we have the land area for those sorts of large manufacturing uh, uh, those mining manufacturing sites and obviously uh, the people to make it happen. At the same time, as you say, it's difficult. The reason why it's difficult is we are fractured. We have challenging logistics across the continent. And so we do need to keep on working with partners, China and others, to be really reducing those uh, differences, the logistics. We need to reduce the tariffs and so on across the continent. We have a plan, but we just need to keep, we need to be pushing harder to implement it.